Food security is a global issue. It's even more important in coastal communities. The Coral Triangle Initiative is six countries with shared marine resources, and those marine resources are the most biologically diverse on the planet in terms of coral reef species, reef fish species, mangrove species, and so on. I've been involved in under research into marine resource use and marine planning in, in Indonesia since 2001. I've been looking at the processes by which marine national parks in particular are set up and how local communities can participate. My, one of my main points was focusing upon the benefits to food security that can be achieved through appropriate forms of marine conservation. This work has been focused mainly in the Wakatobi and looking in particular at the Bajau community who um, have a very high degree of dependence on marine resources for food, fuel and, and building materials. One of the main findings that we've been developing over time is the need to ensure that marine parks do yield tangible, realistic uh, and obvious benefits for local communities. We've been looking at ways in which communities can be more actively involved in park management, actively involved in the management of fisheries in particular, in order to generate those socio-economic benefits associated with concepts like spillover within marine parks, which over time increase fish stocks outside a highly protected zone within the marine park. What we are really interested in doing is using our knowledge of conservation to improve the, the resilience of coastal communities. If we can manage our marine resources in a way which improves the, the availability, the affordability of food within coastal communities, mainly marine resources as food, then we're going to improve their resilience to these other stresses. I think this does have a global uh, significance, particularly in developing countries. Indonesia has the second largest coastline in the world. It has 18,000 islands. Crucially, we share the same habit. We share the same marine resources. We are neighbours in, in that sense, very close neighbours. And we need to ensure that the efforts in marine conservation in both countries are complementary. I think marine conservation occupies a high priority in national and international government's policies, quite rightly. There is a shared necessity to, to manage those collaboratively. If one country is not managing its resources well, other countries will suffer the consequences. The idea is that through sustainable resource use and conservation, we can build food security. We can ensure that fish stocks are not exhausted un and depleted. And we can give communities and natural ecosystems the best chance to be resilient to the impacts of climate change, which are already happening. I think both our governments are very, um, very behind, very supportive of closer, closer cooperation. I think universities can lead the way. We already cooperate in a number of areas when we exchange students. I think that Indonesian scientists are incredibly enthusiastic about the work they do. And if Anything that Australia can do to export some of its knowledge, to export some experience or advice is going to help Indonesians in managing their own resources. I think Indonesian scientists would, would benefit from experiencing what Australian scientists have done over the past 20 or 30 years in terms of coral reef management. And you can avoid some of the problems and some of the um, difficulties that Australia has gone through if you know about them in advance. And that would be one of the main, uh, main benefits from cooperating. You learn from others' mistakes. Clearly, the, the priority in terms of conserving and managing marine environments is, is getting more and more acute with, with climate change and everything that goes with that. And we need to be acting now to make sure that we have something worth conserving in, in 50 years' time. And that's exactly what we're seeking to do. There are many government funding sources available. Um, the government has set aside a number of um, 
channels, a number of funding avenues, which academics, institutions and the private sector can, can apply to. It could be exchanges, it could be internships, it can be seed funding for initiatives, it can be longer term collaborations across institutions. We've used the new Colombo plan already as a way to facilitate exchanges and transfers of staff and students across, across our two countries. And I think this is an avenue which both countries can clearly benefit from. Conferences would be the first most obvious one, but also through um, online sources. We, we, as within a university, there are many ways in which we publicize the work that we're doing. We put it on various types of websites and we get people reading our, our material and contacting you and saying, I'd like to find out more about this. And that on its own can lead to collaborations. Back in 2001, um, I was in the country when I approached scientists. I simply looked them up, found out that they were doing a similar line of work to that which I was interested in and contact them. At that time, I think it was via email. It is a case of identifying one or two key individuals to start with, but then they lead you into others and you build up networks that you might never have predicted.